good morning from the other chair today. First thing in the morning when the sun first starts to peek up over my neighbor's roof, it is like beating down on this chair, on like, like one corner of this chair over here. And so it always washes me out. So I decided to go ahead and move over to this one, at least for now. And Miss Emily has taken the spot over there because she likes the sun beating down on her. Um, but anyway, you will have noticed that I have a new microphone and you can probably tell because it sounds better now too. It took a little bit of finagling. The microphone sensitivity settings on this camera are very touchy, but I think I finally have it to the point where there's not going to be a lot of distortion, but you'll still be able to hear a good level of volume. So, um, anyway, the plan for today, I have been working on my nutrition certification some more and I have enough information now about the vitamin D portion of this training that I would like to share that with you. I have learned some interesting things about that. I'm about two thirds of the way through it. Um, over the next couple of days, I can probably finish this and be ready to take my test. I just took a big pause over Christmas and New Year's, but now I'm back at it. Um, and then the plan for the weekend, we are getting our first winter storm of the year on Sunday. And we're supposed to get, last time I looked, four to eight inches of snow, probably gonna end up being more like three because that's just the way it normally works out around here. Um, but it is going to be Emily's very first snowfall. So I'm curious to see how she is going to act in the snow. I think it's going to be really fun to watch. Um, but unfortunately, it's also going to be bitter cold. So we won't be able to let her stay out very long. And that also means that Saturday is going to be garden prep for the storm. And really the only prep there is, is getting all of the greens um, harvested and brought inside because um, all the greens, they are a cold weather vegetable and they do really well in cold temperatures. We've had you know, 40s for highs, 30s for lows, and then even we've had some 20s too here and there, and they've done well through all of that, um, but a hard freeze is going to take them out. So I'm going to go ahead and harvest them before they're all gone, and then the greenhouse is what I don't know what to expect because we do have it wrapped, and then there is a heater in there, but I just don't know if the heater can keep up with these kind of temperatures because we are supposed to be having single digits overnight, like I think Monday and Tuesday night are supposed to be six degrees, and then like the low teens during the day for a high, at least on Monday, I think Tuesday is going to get closer to 20, but either way, that's cold. That's hard freeze weather. And the fact that we're also not supposed to have any sun, um, at least as of now, that's always subject to change. You know how the weather forecasts are, but so far it's looking like it's clouds all week next week. And so when you don't have the sun to help the greenhouse and all we're depending on is the heater and the temperatures are that cold, I just don't know if it's going to keep up because if it drops below 50 in there for tomatoes, that's pretty much just kind of game over. So that is the plan. And then on my lunch break, I will be back here to chat with you about the nutrition stuff. So I will see you then. Hi, and welcome back. As promised, I am going to go over the things that I have learned about vitamin D with you. And I've got my handy dandy little notes here to kind of keep me on track and make sure I don't forget anything. So <clears throat> kind of to start off, vitamin D is actually not a vitamin at all. It is a hormone. And it is a hormone that is generated by our exposure to the sun. And so I think it's fairly common knowledge by now, but in case it isn't, um, our origin, the human species in general, our origin is East Africa, equatorial East Africa. And so, of course, at that point in history, um, we were exposed to sun all the time. And... In addition to that, we had very short lifespan, so the long-term sun exposure didn't really have a chance to lead to skin cancer because we weren't living past, you know, 30 years old at that point in history. Um, so the question now is, what is the proper level of vitamin D that we need to have? And then um, how many IUs of a vitamin D supplement might we need to take in order to reach those optimal levels? And so the bare minimum of vitamin D that we need to have to prevent having rickets is 30 nanomoles. And what is considered to be sufficient and kind of the target is 75 nanomoles. But it has also been discovered that our East Africa origins, we would have had at least 100 nanomoles and possibly even up to 115. <clears throat> so the significance in that is the higher our level of vitamin D, the less our risk of disease and cancer. It's been discovered that people with higher vitamin D levels consistently have lower levels of chronic disease and cancer. And so there's been a lot of kind of discovery about why that is. Of course, one of the things is if we have high vitamin D levels, that means we probably are spending more time outside. And if we're spending more time outside, we're probably more active and more active people tend to have longer lives and less 
less risk of disease. So that was kind of one theory, and it's a very valid one. Um, but it's also been kind of shown that whenever you take supplements and you have higher vitamin D levels, you also kind of get that same benefit. Um, so supplementing could be important if you are in a situation where you're not able to get enough sun. So like right now, for example, it's winter time. I hardly ever go outside in the winter time. I did actually go out for just a little bit on my lunch break yesterday because it was fairly warm and the sun is actually shining. Um, and I'll probably do the same when I'm done with this um, just to get a little bit of sunlight on my face. But I mean, my entire body is covered because it's cold outside. So in the summer on my lunch breaks, I will go outside and I will lay in the sun for 20 minutes, 10 minutes each side. And that's just enough amount to generate some vitamin D without worrying about risk of skin cancer. So where sun can become toxic is when you are exposed to it for long lengths of time, and especially if you get sunburned. So the best time to be outdoors and to get the sun exposure is in the morning or in the evening when the UV rays are at their lowest. And if you get on even like the weather channel, you can check the app and it will tell you the UV index for that time of day. And it ranges from one to nine, I think maybe even one to 10. So like the highest would be 10 and the lowest would be one. So you want to be able to go outside when you're under like a five. Um, and that is your least risk for UV exposure for skin cancer. Um, if you aren't able to get outdoors and spend enough time in the sun to help generate that vitamin D, which is me right now in the winter time, then it's important to supplement. And so then the question is, how much do we need to supplement in order to elevate our levels of vitamin D? And so there's kind of some back and forth on this. And the general consensus is, if you take 1,000 IUs a day, that is enough for 50% of the population to be sufficient. 2,000 IUs a day will get about 80 for 85 percent of the population sufficient. And for people who are overweight, obese, or elderly, um, 3,000 IUs per day um, is probably more what it takes to be sufficient. So it really depends on you know your size, your age, how much time you're actually spending outside. So there are a lot of different factors in there. So there's a lot to consider when you're trying to pinpoint exactly how much would be right for you. For me, I am taking right now 1,000 IUs per day. I'm contemplating maybe taking two doses per day instead of one, just because I really am not outside at all right now, um, with a very rare exception. It's wintertime, and I am someone who is very sensitive to the cold, and I love the heat, and so I just don't go outdoors in the winter. Um, but the important thing to note is there is a such thing as toxicity for vitamin D, but it's a lot. It's 10,000 IUs a day and over, which is considered to be a toxicity level for vitamin D. So you'd really have to push it in order to be able to overdo it. So for me, I think doing uh, 2,000 IUs a day would be safe. And then something else to note about sunlight is when you do have sun exposure, it also boosts your melatonin levels at night. So the longer you're out in the sun and when you come in in the evenings and you're ready to go to bed, that exposure to sunlight increases your melatonin production by 13%. So not only does it help generate vitamin D, which helps fight disease and cancer and promote longevity, it also helps promote sleep. Um, and one last thing that I wanted to kind of mention on here. So you have UVB rays and you have UVA rays, and it is the UVB rays that are responsible for um, producing vitamin D and so you might be thinking, what about a tanning bed? Well, a tanning bed actually generates very, very, very little vitamin D because it's almost entirely UVA rays. And tanning beds are actually extremely unsafe when it comes to skin cancer. I know you're in them for a short period of time, but that UVA ray is so intense. I mean, think about it. If it takes just a few minutes to tan your skin, what might that be doing? And so you know, I had mentioned long-term sun exposure and sunburns are kind of the keys to getting skin cancer. Well, if you think about a tanning bed, it's kind of like accelerating that sun exposure and pulling it all into just a few minute session. Um, and it's really, really toxic for the skin. And so um, I would definitely suggest if you are someone who really wants to be tan, I would suggest spray tans or doing self-tanner. I personally don't really promote those either because the chemicals in them can also help promote cancer, but it's probably not as risky or as dangerous as sitting in a tanning bed. So if you just absolutely have to have a tan, um, then I would probably recommend those over a tanning bed at least. 
Um, for me personally, I don't worry about being tan in the wintertime. I don't really worry about being tan ever, but in the summertime, I go outside. Like I said earlier, I do 20 minutes a day and I do get a little bit of a healthy glow. I don't get super dark, but I get tan throughout the summer. Um, and what I do is there, I used to have like a little pool and I've just kind of quit messing with those because they constantly, they'll spring leaks. And I feel like I was always talking to warranty companies about those silly things. So last year I found it's essentially a pool floaty and I'll put a picture up here of what I'm talking about, but you fill it up with water and it holds water, but it's also a floaty. So you can just kind of lay in it with just a few inches of water. So it's just enough to help cool you off but I'll lay in that and then I'll do 10 minutes on one side and 10 minutes on the other. That's 20 minutes. It's short-term sun exposure. It's just enough to generate some vitamin D without elevating my risk for skin cancer. So that's kind of what I do in the summertime and I don't necessarily supplement. Um, I may continue to supplement over the summer this year just because without actually going and having blood drawn and checking my vitamin D levels, which I may actually do. Um, my boyfriend's uncle is a chiropractor and they do blood work and it's definitely very affordable, especially if you choose not to bill insurance. If you pay out of pocket, it's super affordable. So I may go and just um, kind of have those nutrient levels checked and just see where I'm at. That way I'll have a better idea and not just be guessing at it. Um, but uh, supplementing is, like I said, toxicity level is over 10,000 IUs a day. So supplementing really isn't going to hurt anything. Um, so I probably will go ahead and double up my vitamin D supplement for now and then kind of play it by ear as spring and summertime roll around, especially since, you know, in addition to laying out in the sun 20 minutes on my lunch break every day, first thing in the morning, and you know, it's daylight at like 5 a.m. in the summertime. So as soon as I'm out of bed, I'm out in my garden messing around with stuff before work. So I am getting kind of those early morning UV rays that are not super intense, but can still um, give me some additional time to generate some vitamin D. So. I may keep you updated on what I decide to do there when the time comes around, if I decide to do blood work and kind of see where my levels are at. Um, but that's really what I wanted to kind of update you on for where I'm at right now in my nutrition cert. Uh, the next uh, video that I have to go through is about Parkinson's disease, which is kind of close to my heart because my stepdad, he's been diagnosed and undiagnosed and diagnosed and undiagnosed. And we're sure that that's what he has. It's just so hard to get a diagnosis. And then he was supposed to go to a specialist this month. And then they just got a phone call a couple of weeks ago that that specialist spontaneously retired. And so now he's been out of luck again. And I have a friend of mine is a neurologist here in the town where we live. And so I kind of recommended that he go see him. Um, and he was able to get an appointment with him, but even with him, he can't get in until May. So he's had a very long gap with no treatment. Um, he had been on medication for it for a while. And then of course they undiagnosed him and took him off and so hopefully he will get what he needs, um, but learning about Parkinson's and what we can do just nutritionally to kind of help in that situation. Of course, it's incurable, but we can prolong symptoms with uh, diet and lifestyle. Um, and then also Michael's aunt has Parkinson's as well, and she's farther in. She's had it for, I think, like five or six years now. So she's kind of getting pretty far into it. I mean, she's not bad, bad, but she's definitely past the early stages um, so, you know, there are people kind of close to my heart that um, are dealing with this disease. So learning about that is going to be um, important for me. And then after that, I'm not sure what the final videos are, but I'm getting close to the end. So I will update you whenever I am finished with all of that and pass the exam to continue my certification. And I do have to take one more course because this one is eight continuing credits. So I have to have eight more and I have the course picked out already. I will purchase it and start on it when I'm done with this one. So that's where we're at. And I am now going to go eat my lunch and probably sit outside at least for a few minutes because it is almost 50 degrees, I think, right now. And the sun is shining. So um, sitting in the sun, even when it's a little cooler like that, it's not so bad. But that's what I'm going to do. And I will catch up with you most likely on Saturday when it is time to go and pull all of my greens ahead of the deep freeze. So thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. All right, I don't know if you remember when I purchased my couple of winter throw blankets from Hobby Lobby, but let me show you this one. We're gonna put this one off to the side because it's okay. But this one, remember what I said about how I would only replace something if it was falling apart? <laughs> it's brand new, it's the very first time I ever washed it. So it turns out that all of these 
little bits on here, how it's got the fringe, it's because there is nothing securing them. It's like they just took it off the loom and then cut it and left it. And so if you wash it, all of these little pieces just come out of it. Oh, man. So it does look, I expected it to actually be kind of in shambles and it does look like it's still pretty well in one piece, but I won't be able to wash it. Or if I do, I guess I at least won't be able to put it in the dryer. So I guess I won't need to worry about replacing it, but that's just really crappy. So if you saw that one on there and you thought, oh, I like that. I want to go buy it. Do not buy it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Look at all of this. It's like a ball of yarn just off of one blanket. Ugh, just my luck. So in looking at this, I'm actually thinking it might already be too late. Oh gosh, it only got into or got about 20 last night, which we've had in the low 20s before now, but it was also really windy and the feels like temperature was about eight degrees. So I'm going to go ahead and cut all of these and take them inside and we'll see um, as they thaw if they're going to actually be crisp or if they're going to be wilty. The arugula, I might just, let me move this, make sure you can see it, but I have so much of it and I just use a little bit at a time because it's so peppery and the taste is so strong that I just have a ton left. And so I think most of it's just going to get cut and then left so it can kind of compost into the soil. Um, but we're going to, we're going to harvest a little bit of greens. I've been working on eating them all week long and I've got them pretty well taken down. So I've got just a little bit of romaine and some kale, and that's all we need to do. <laughs> Don't even need a knife. I can just break them off at this point. This is kind of crazy. I was somewhat tempted to work the soil in this bed too, but I did that after I pulled the green beans and radishes and it's actually looking pretty good. It also hasn't had like a solar cover over it to help force the growth. So I am hoping that I can wait and turn the soil a little bit closer to planting season and it won't be too bad, but Mostly I'm just ready to get back in the house because I'm warm everywhere else, but my face, like my nose is just numb. It is so cold out here right now. It's pretty much right at 20 degrees. So, and it's only going to get colder tonight. It's going to be single digits. So we'll see how this goes. But one thing I am going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pull these and take them indoors too. Just the tops of the little solar things, just because I don't know how these bitter cold temperatures are going to do the batteries in this. And I don't want to have to buy more. Um, next season because I just got these like late summer early fall as it is so they're still pretty new but anyway got done with this and I'm gonna pop these off and get these greens inside and wrap it up for the morning Okay, 
I also have to decide what to do about these tomatoes because it is about 20 degrees outside right now and the temperature in here is 52 and the heater is set on 60 so if it's barely keeping around 50 degrees in here when the temperature is at 20 when it gets down to like eight degrees overnight i i have a ton here let me just show you see i still have several tomatoes that are like in the midst of ripening just not quite there yet and then some more green ones which the green ones i'm not so concerned about um i'll just pick them and they'll be they'll just go in the well probably not the compost bin because i don't want all the seeds they'll probably just get tossed but uh, i just hate to pick ripe ones too early but i feel like it's probably best to go ahead and pick the ones that are almost ripe and just stick them in the windowsill and let them finish up and then just leave the plants out here with green tomatoes and see how they fare over the next week um, i have a feeling they're not going to make it i don't think the heater is going to be able to keep up with those kinds of temperatures but um, anyway i'm going to go ahead and pick the ones that are almost ripe and we're going to take those inside as well I left my basket in for outside, <laughs> so we're going to improvise and pop these in my pockets. Okay, I think I have all of the ones that were ripening picked now, and there are still, God, so many green ones on here, so we'll just see what happens. I'm gonna pop these tomatoes in the windowsill and hopefully let them finish ripening. Um, a couple of them were pretty close to there anyway. There's just a couple that we're gonna need a minute. And this is why you usually see me with my hair like clipped back or all of it up just because my hair is not very long, but I hate having it in my face. It drives me crazy. So let's see what happens with this as it thaws out. Probably going to be wilted, which isn't a big deal for the kale because I'm going to cook it down anyway. But obviously the lettuce is another story. There's... I'm pretty confident I may as well just go ahead and toss it. But there's not very much lettuce, so we'll just see. But anyway, all done with that. I am going to finish getting myself ready, which basically consists of changing my shoes <laughs> and uh, head out to get some coffee. I'm back and closing out the vlog and I thought I would just show you this that I picked up from TJ Maxx. I had a regular little like cat scratch post thing and every single time she would scratch her claws on it she would like pull back and it would just topple over. And so then I got her one of those little like pad things that I don't really know how to describe it. I might just throw a picture up here um, but she wouldn't even use it. So this one is nice and hefty 
And so I think if she scratches on this one, it should not capsize. So, um, so far she's afraid of it. <laughs> she'll get used to it sitting here and hopefully we'll see if she'll use it. Um, the cat tree that's in my office she uses and she'll scratch on that, but she only really goes in there when I'm in there working. And so she in the living room is constantly like on the corners of these chairs and I'm constantly having to make her get off and yell at her. And um, so I'm hoping that having this in here, she'll actually use it because she has this part and then also um, some carpet back here that's maybe a little bit more upholstery like. So I'm hoping that she will use this to scratch on. But if not, I'm just going to leave the tag. And if, you know, a week from now she still hasn't shown any interest, I'll probably just return it. But I think that's going to do it for this vlog. So um, one more thing tomorrow, winter storm. So it's gone from us having up to eight inches of snow to only having like an inch overnight. So we'll see if we even get anything. But I will be back to start the next vlog tomorrow. And uh, hopefully I'll have a little bit of snow and maybe some footage of Emily playing in it to share with you. But this is going to be it for this one. And I will see you again on Wednesday.